So technology, there's basically three things that matter uh, around the technology drivers of artificial intelligence. One is the core computing technology. Uh, and it, that's basically um, uh, how, how quickly you can just process and, and learn. And um, without getting into it, there's two different types of chips, training and infrared chips, all this other stuff. But all, all you can basically say is, you guys heard of Moore's Law in semiconductors? So actually right now in, in uh, natural language processing, we're actually, it's actually amazing. We're basically going at double speed on Moore's Law. So if you actually look at NVIDIA's roadmap, if you look at Intel's Nirvana roadmap, and Movidius roadmap, basically flops per second are, are more than doubling per year, which is really impressive. The problem with all of these things, and the big problem with all of these things, is that these things are way too power draining. So if you open up the back of a fully autonomous vehicle, there's like a, a you can't put anything in the back of the trunk because it's all just rows and rows of power hungry uh, GPUs, which means you get no battery life. So it's actually not a performance issue, it's a power issue. This has got to get solved. Um, so the second thing is around the algorithms, so the programming language. Now this is something that's really fascinating because um, uh, this is the first time that sort of a major technology transition is happening almost fully on open source. So open source is exactly that. You put the source code on the internet and anybody can use it, which is as opposed to Microsoft Windows, which, you know, you can see this part and you can make your APIs and you can write to Microsoft Windows, but you can't open the kernel. Now, what's interesting about this is that um, uh, people don't think this will persist because um, there's no stack. So um, if you're making applications for a smartphone, you know you can either write to the Android stack or you could write to the iPhone stack. But you know where to write to. If you're writing for the PC, you write to Windows. And this, of course, makes the people who control Android or iOS or Windows really, really rich. But it creates enormous benefits because you get all of the innovation. You don't have to have innovation at the, at the raw programming level. You can have it at the application and software level. It makes life a lot easier. Um, and people are expecting this to happen. And so I, I, the war that's going on out there, and it's just, a, it's just fascinating, and I have no idea how it'll end, but, but you basically have about seven or eight different semiconductor companies, plus about, well, there's actually 12 major open source platforms on AI. And then you also have all these internet companies with their own closed source. And everyone is thinking, how do I create Wintel, but in the artificial intelligence world? So this means that uh, when you are a company down the line in 10 years and you want to build robots to run your factory and you want those to be smart robots to replace human beings, you actually, just like the same way today, you take an iPhone out of a box and it just works, somebody's going to provide that stack that just works, and then you're just going to customize that for your specific factory. And that is necessary because if every single company that wants to use thinking robots has to figure out all the programming to make thinking robots work, this business will never scale. Because there just aren't enough programmers in the world to have every company recreate the stack. The problem is, is that everybody wants to create the stack and they don't want their stack to work with somebody else's stack. So it's going to be, a, it's going to be an interesting, interesting little battle. So then uh, data. The other thing is the amount of data that's getting collected. Because you cannot learn anything or do anything in artificial intelligence without data. And the two big things that are happening, of course, is that due to chats and due to social media, there's an enormous amount of digital, a huge amount of digital data that's being created. But the second thing is you guys have heard of Internet of Things, IoT, facial video cameras. There's now an enormous amount of real world physical data that can now get integrated to the digital data. And that's all getting the ability to get put together. So that, you know, data is basically, you know, the, I have the numbers in here somewhere, but it's basically going up 5x uh, every year. I think that more data has been created in the last two years than in the previous, you know, 10 millennia of human history. Now, most of that data is pretty useless, but it is a lot of data. As someone whose wife takes about 800 photos a day, I know that most of that data is pretty useless. So um, I have to get some jokes in here. I'm getting tired up here. So 
And then there's a lot of there's a lot of venture capital. So venture capital into AI has it depends on what you call AI. There's a lot of companies uh, which are just sort of random normal companies with a website which are now calling themselves like fintech or artificial, so they can get a higher valuation, right? So it's difficult to say. So so China China is approaching. Um, you know, artificial intelligence from, from sort of a, a different perspective. Um, like most technical evolutions that push on productivity, the upside in China of applying these sorts of technologies is probably higher than any other market. 